madam. Why do they call you the king of boys? In anticipation of Netflix's first original series from Nigeria, King of Boys, The Return of the King, I sat for an exclusive interview with series director and visionaire Kemi Adetiba, as well as Tony Tones, who plays young Eniola Salami in the series, but not before we shared a moment. Now, first things first. Shane Yes, it's me! Okay, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Thinking about the journey all the way back from 20, uh, it's, I'm sure it's even before 2018 for you, but of course, looking at it now, I just want the two of you to think about it. King of Boys, The Return of the King, Netflix, <laughs> how huge is this for you? I'm going to start with Kevin, of course. Yes. Um, I think it's so weird that you asked that question because Tony and I with King of Boys have like the most amazing story, which you can't tell us, we'll take all your time. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but from like the chance conversation to her chance audition and then to it's just skyrocketing and her with it and us coming back here is such an incredible story that we probably need to do a documentary just for that um but yeah it's amazing how we've evolved and then we're still here and everyone is is anticipating it probably even more than even the first one right mm -hmm. definitely i think um, here we to the if you just drop the trailer, just the trailer, and it's like boom. I don't yeah, know. The boys in the atmosphere. You, have, you will not know because we're the ones out here. I know. <laughs> but you know what? Let's talk about you know the character. You know, you know, Laburu. Obviously, you play you know you know a younger Sh Shola Shabuale. We're looking at her coming back after five years, and it's different from the first one because we're seeing you know how she got to where she is. But you know, just looking at the trailer, we're seeing her dealing with her. Inner demons, mm. quote and unquote. How did you navigate that character? Uh, okay, not to use, but I don't really. Yeah, 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 no, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> that's a tricky question. And for me, um, you know, young library is all about the fire. Mm. So for me, I just I'm focused on that. I'm focused on just the fiery part of her, the, the, the evil part of her, the, the aggressor part of her, if you know what I mean. Trying to constantly kill the soft part of her, the good part of her, the good part of her that is wanting to be better. So I just sort of focused on that. And I let Anshola do the other do the other <laughs> thing. <laughs> do, the, do the nice effort pretty much. That's what I focused all of all of my energy on. I just focused on the rage, the mm -hmm. rage side of her. That's that was my buzzword, rage all the time. We're all thinking a movie. And then we're hit with this. Oh, actually, it's going to be a seven-part series. <laughs> Kimmy, what's going on? Talk to what? How, how did you? How do we come? Well, in? first of all, y'all are lucky that you even had a part two. Because <laughs> I mean, I think everybody knew that there was going to be a sequel, like a follow-up, that before I did. Yeah, we all knew. Kimmy so said she was going to do a part two. I was not about to watch it. Watch it. Was so exhausting. She was like, no. So yeah. I was shocked when I got the call. Like, yo, what up? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to touch it. And I think for me, it was. I feel like I said everything. I needed to say so what else am I saying um, it becomes such a classic and, and I, I, please I don't want to touch it and then you know because sometimes when people say um, uh, people assume that it's easier to do a, a, a full out to KOB but it actually is harder yeah. because of how well the first one how did. do you top that you exactly top that? Yeah. It's, it's actually easier for me to just go and start another pro um, project but then going back to this one I had to be sure because I mean I got offered all kinds of money from well, to be random people just do it I was like no because I don't even have a it, I didn't want to go in thinking money mm -hmm. people love KOB1 they're going to rush for KOB2 and I only decided to do it when an idea came and I remember that when that moment happened tell but us then, about that moment no it's not it's you have to tell us it was, oh, so, so basically because I wasn't going to do it and I remember my brother was in town from um, from the US and we were chatting and he was on his computer or something and I just went, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I slept or I woke up. I don't, and, and this is how I get, it just came. And I was like, I think I have an idea for KB2. My brother did not move. He literally didn't breathe because he knew I wasn't going to do it. And he was afraid that if he moved, I would change my mind. So I was walking and pacing the living room, just going, and this, and this, and this, and this. And I'm like, what do you think? You don't like it? He goes, I'm listening to you. <laughs> and so, he's a producer. Yeah, exactly. So, um. And then even he wasn't sure he wanted to do another film because I think it, it took so much out of him. But yeah, speaking of it being a seven-part series or seven-episode series, 
I wanted, if I was going to do this, I wanted to be able to tell a full story. I didn't want to have the limitations of a tour movie where all, everything is just moving fast. And because what has happened to them in the last five years, um, how have they evolved, what's going on with her. And for me, if you see any of my projects, I need to, it's essential for me to, to have a three dimensional character and I needed time because these are such complex characters with very different motivations. Was that different for you? I mean, coming from shooting, of course, the movie and then transitioning to doing a, a seven part series, was that even more exhausting than the first Tony? Um, <laughs> so Kill Me 2 made Kill Me 1 look like we were playing games and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And we shot Kill Me 2 during the during NSARS, so there was a lot happening. That Wait, you, you gotta tell them everything. We shot Kill Me 2 during rainy season, mm -hmm. COVID, yep. COVID lockdown, NSARS, and then the 24 hour lockdown after yeah, the unfortunate year. And then the product itself was just much bigger, much better. It was much more demanding for me because in KOB2, Young and Ella, that Yoruba, she gave me 99% point, 99.9% <laughs> and like my Yoruba isn't really good. So I had to do, I had to learn Yoruba pretty much for the film. And it was just, it was just so much more taxing. And but this KOB2 um, is the film that I got in my life that challenged me the most of any film. Kobe one, it made it, it really made Kobe one seem like we Kobe were one, playing, we're just playing games. Exactly. I'm telling you, Kobe two, we cry, we all cry. Kobe two, everyone says Kobe one is the junior brother. I'm like Kobe one is the little cousin they brought from the village. I'm like, like I'm telling you, like we all we all cry tears from this for this movie. Literally, at some point, I'm sure everybody cried. We all bled. Like it was it was that much, but so now it's it's really really amazing to see the reaction to it because man a lot of so much went into it king of boys sees a recurring cast of shola shobawale tony tones reminisce ill bliss but also new faces like insect by etim richard mufe damijo deemi okolaho fi wara and a host of others First of all, I, I've said to Kemi, I always say that Kemi is a casting genius. She really is. I feel like people should pay her to help them cast their films or cast their product. She's that good. She really sees things that people do not see. Um, so the cast for if you thought the cast for Kill Kill B One was amazing, the cast for Kill B Two is truly exceptional. Mm -hmm. The performances are exceptional. Nothing short of everyone has a moment, and it's a big cast, and everyone has several moments even. Several yeah, yeah, and I think the thing for me that is 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 brilliant is um, I I never go in looking for stars. I go in looking for the but yeah, like I need to have butterflies in my in my gut. Like they understand. Um, I think the only person that like you know caught me you know from the left that I didn't see it coming was her. Because she there wasn't no call, there was no God feeling. I didn't even know who she was. <laughs> it was that story is crazy, but we don't have time to say that. And it still just goes to show divine intervention because she's here. And you know, I I don't understand. I don't know how Kilby would have existed if she never played it. But um, yeah, like I don't go looking for stars. I go looking for. Am I getting butterflies in my stomach? Um, whenever I'm writing, who am I visualizing in in this role? And I, I could, I might have never met these people in my life, and I don't know why I feel so strongly or drawn to this person. And I'm stalking their Instagram. If they're actors, I'm looking at other films they've done. Um, if they are artists, I'm stalking their music videos, just trying to see them in different scenarios that, you know, and then before I make the call and go, hey, I'd like to have a, have a conversation with you about a project I'm working on. You know, I don't know if you'd like to speak to me. And they go, are you crazy? <laughs> Who doesn't want to receive it? about that, I'm not sure. Yeah. I did the table. When asked about the future of protagonist Makanaki, played by Reminis, Kemi Adetiba was sure not to give away any spoilers. I could tell you, but I have to kill you. So the easy I'm way is to die. die. <laughs> I'm going to die for that one because I know that's definitely this is going to be huge. Yeah, <laughs> so I, 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 I would, I would just say that you gotta watch the, 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 the project and. Um, you gotta watch the project. <laughs> if you could just summarize what to expect from King of Boys very quickly. You're expecting Kill Me 2 to be good. It's a given. Yeah. It's better than anything that you can imagine, and that's on everything. Ooh. That's on everything! Yeah.
Expect the unexpected and trust no one. Trust no one. I promise you die. Thank <laughs> you so much. King of Boys, one of the king. I can't wait to see it. Thank, thank you for speaking you, with thank me. Thank you, Shake Top.